another incident happened in St. Joseph's Hospital. They let a young man go. I don't know exactly how young he was, but he was on drugs. They let him go, and as soon as they let him go, he died. So, really, St. Joseph's and Patterson, they need to get rid of that hospital. The emergency room, the crisis unit, they, all, they have to get rid of the whole department. They did it to my daughter. My daughter was, um, she was missing for 20 days or more, and um, my husband had found her. The cops came, they took her to the hospital. I was driving from, you know, uh, out of work, and when I went there, they were ready to discharge her. My daughter was talking to herself. Okay, my daughter was talking to herself. She wasn't good at all. She looked dehydrated. She looked horrible. And she couldn't even have a conversation. And they were ready to discharge her. I was yelling. I was screaming in the hospital room. I'm like, how could you even think about discharging my daughter like that? I overheard one of the nurses say, because I went to the other room, and one of the nurses said, well, she's just going to come back again. They're going to keep, she's, she's, she's going to just keep doing what she's doing, and they're going to end up in the hospital again. And I ran, and I said, no, my daughter has a problem, and she needs help. So they kept her, and the doctor didn't want to do blood work. He didn't want to do cardiology tests, nothing. And then um, I had to wait in the waiting room because I got into an argument with the doctor because he didn't want to give me his name. He said it was none of my business. He said, um, he said, you know, basically, you know, I'm gonna get call security, which he did. Ended up in the waiting room. When I ended up in the waiting room, um, I had to wait for to see what was happening, you know, because I wasn't gonna leave. And then I called the crisis. The crisis unit said, "Yeah, we're gonna discharge her." And I said, "How could you even think about discharging her? She's talking to herself." And the woman was like, oh, well, she's 22, you know, we can't get into details, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to discharge her. And of course, you know, I got mad. I'm like, what are you thinking? Her name was Sarah from the crisis unit in St. Joseph's Hospital. And she was um, very rude to me. She's like, well, not that she was rude, but she was cold. And she said, well, we're, we're going to discharge her. You know, she's 22 years old. Click. She hung up on me. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me get my story straight. She didn't hang up on me. She said, have a great day. And then uh, that was it. She hung up on me. So waited for my daughter. My daughter came out. She came out with hospital scrubs on, no shoes. She had the hospital socks on. My daughter was walking out ready to go into the street at Patterson. I told my daughter to wait for me. She did not. I had to run after her. Okay, mind you, I'm 43 years old. I have a bad knee. I had to walk 10 blocks. I was... I was cutting corners, I was screaming, I was yelling at people, tell me where she went, tell me where she went. At the same time I was calling Patterson police, I was trying to get them on the phone. They came finally, I got into the police car, we were running to see where she went, then I got out of the police car, then I saw her, and then the cop didn't run after her, the cop, because she started running the other way, and then... The cop was like, you know, if you see her, grab her. And I'm thinking in my head, come on, these are these are citizens, you know, that's not their job. You have to run after her. So he finally got her. When I got her, she was not in a good condition at all. She was just so skinny, and she just did not look good. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. And everybody kept telling me, watch it, because the Patterson cops are going to do something to her. They're going to beat her. She was screaming. You know, they had to get a little bit rough because my daughter was not well. Um... And then finally, you know, she calmed down and then they took us to an emergency room and then I had to call the state, which I still have to actually file a report on the state. That's That still hasn't ended for me. And then, um, I, you know, they finally kept her. They didn't tell me where they were transferring her to. I found that out myself. But um, they finally kept her in the crisis unit and they put her in the hospital, but the journey was disgustingly horrible. You know, I, I'm still traumatized from that moment. It was one of the worst experiences I, from all of my years with her. That was one of the worst experiences. And now I'm hearing again, St. Joseph's Hospital, I'm hearing again that uh, an, another victim, well, my daughter wasn't a victim, thank God, but uh, unfortunately another person has died uh, because St. Joseph's made that decision to discharge them. Again, they don't want to deal with addicts. They don't want to deal with people with, with alcohol problems. They want them in and out. Literally, I could tell you the truth right now, they treat them like dogs. They treat them worse than dogs. They have them sitting in the corner in the hospital on a bed, okay? They sober up. The doctors treat them like garbage, okay? They don't give them water. Okay, I've seen times where they ask for water and they're not given water because I've been in St. Joseph's like a hundred times. They don't treat them. They don't give them blood work. They don't give them anything. They have urination in their pants. 
the, the, the security guard is nasty. The whole environment is disgusting in St. Joseph's Hospital. And they have no, they have a lack of respect for people that are addicts. They have no compassion. And to get an evaluation, it has to go through the emergency doctor first. So these emergency doctors, they don't care. They're just saying, you know what? They're an addict, they don't need help. Get them out of here. And that's exactly what they do. So they pass that whole evaluation thing. So that's what they did to my daughter. They passed that whole eval thing, and they said, oh, she's just ready, she's fine. So trust me, do not go to St. Joseph's Hospital because if you have a loved one that has a problem, they're not gonna do anything for her. They're gonna treat them like garbage. And I've been through this enough to know that that is the worst hospital. So when my daughter, I actually, just to make a, a quick story, I found my daughter once, okay, in Patterson, New Jersey. And I had to bribe her to get into my car. She had, somebody had beaten her. Her face was bloodied. Her face was swollen. And I had to stay calm. And I had to tell my daughter, babe, I will get you, you know, let, uh, you know anything you want. Let's just go. Like, like, let's get in the car. I ran, okay. I drove so fast when she got into my car. And I ended up going to Parsippany, New Jersey, which from Patterson to Parsippany is a good 25 minutes. I had cops following me because I did not want my daughter to run out of the car. That is how much I hate this hospital. This hospital has put me through so much and you know, and it's horrible that you can't get help for your loved one. It's horrible that you can't get the treatment that you need because rehabs are so expensive. The whole thing is corruption that uh, they charge you $40,000 or more for, for a month of rehabilitation to get what you need, to get counseling, to get all that stuff, you know, and unfortunately I don't have that amount. But just the, the journey that you have to go through for a loved one, and New Jersey's the worst place for rehabs. They don't have any good rehabs at all. Um, and most of the rehabs are like ugly you know you walk in you want to you want to go right out I've been to them I've seen them I brought my daughter there and they all look all run down and let me tell you okay I was gonna take my daughter to this place in Jersey City and it was called uh, women's best way something like that when I went there I couldn't even find the door okay that's how horrible it was it's supposed to be a very good program they say and it's supposed to like re, um you know re you know rejuvenate your mind whatever there were drug dealers outside of the place okay it was disgusting that that's not helping your loved one okay that there are no choices here no choices at all and that's the sad part is that you can't get a good place that's nice i'm not talking about the marriott i'm not talking about that place in California, Palace, whatever that place is called, um, Malibu, whatever. I'm talking about just a nice, decent place that can be funded properly to have decent chairs, decent beds, decent pillows, decent games, decent things to occupy their time when they have that free time, decent counselors that care, therapists that care that doctors that aren't going to rush with their patients and get out because they're not getting enough money, you know, stuff like that. So I just hope, and I'm still going through it, I just hope that something changes before all these young adults are lost in the system and they become older adults and they become, um, you know, victims. So that's, what, that's my story with St. Joseph's Hospital.